Hey, it's great to have you here today. Today, we're gonna talk about how to be a predator in your sales job. I know that sounds aggressive, but in the business world, being focused and driven is essential for success, so let's dive in. I've made 60,000 cold calls in my five-year tech sales career, started at the bottom as a sales development rep, promoted six times to the same tech company to a senior account executive, made a lot of money in the process. The reason I share that with you is my experience has revealed that the one subtle trait that separates bottom level, low performing reps who miss quota from average reps who hit quota some of the time to the top producing exceptional reps who go to President's Club is being willing to interrupt prospects days, make the ask for their time, ask for the order, try and close the deal when it seems like all the odds are stacked against them. If you're going into the woods to hunt, you're not waiting for the deer to stop going to the bathroom or, hey, can you come over here? You're pulling the trigger, you're making the shot regardless of if you feel ready, if it seems like a good time. Sales is a contact sport. We as sales reps are paid to be told no, and we know full well that the busy executive has 100 emails to open, someone on their team just quit, they probably wanna leave work early to go to their children's choir concert, they need to send out three proposals to their boss, they wanna get promoted as well, and you know what? They're gonna hear their phone ring, and it's gonna be you on the other end, calling from your home, calling from your office, full well knowing you're interrupting the day, trying to set the meeting. And by the end of today's video, you will know the four traits that separate the exceptional reps from the bottom level reps so that you can make more money in your sales job, find more satisfaction, promote sooner rather than later, and get more of what you want out of life. Trait number one is to find an abundance of self-belief. I ask you right now, do you believe in yourself? It's binary, it's yes, no. Either you full well look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I'd wanna be led by me, I'd wanna work for myself, I believe in myself, or maybe there are some hesitations or doubts, and you must confront these. If you don't believe in yourself, why would anyone else believe in you? That's a Tom Brady quote. You think when Tom Brady was young and he went to the first Super Bowl, he felt ready or he felt like he had the experience. It didn't matter. He was gonna show up and play the game regardless. When I first started my tech sales career, I was the lowest performing rep my first month and I started to hesitate. I wasn't sure if I believed. I called my mom that first month and I said, is sales for me? Everyone's gonna ask the sales for them. And I eventually had to confront that and learn from that and grow from that. If you believe in yourself, anything is possible, but if you don't believe in yourself, nothing is possible. Trait number two is fear of failure. This is an interesting one because I've observed that society conditions us to swim with the tide, not to make too much noise, to listen to orders and follow them, but the few of us who say, you know what, I'm gonna perform to reach my potential, not my quota, I'm gonna start a personal brand, I'm gonna do something that I know may make someone else disapprove of my actions. Take Elon Musk, for example. Elon recently launched his new starship, the Falcon, the biggest rocket ship ever, and it blew up, but it was a massive success internally at SpaceX because they collected thousands of data points, and if it would have blown up before it actually got off the Earth, that would have been a catastrophic failure, but it actually got in the air, and it was a massive success. But if you listen to the media, they said, oh, Elon's rocket blew up, massive failure. If Elon was worried about what the media was gonna say in the very first launch of this new rocket, he never would have risked the money, he never would have risked the embarrassment, the shame of sending off the rocket. He sent off the rocket regardless, and I believe the most successful among us, they don't view failure as something real. It's a false paradigm. I cannot fail. I succeed, I win at everything I do. Every day, I just win more or less than the previous day, so it's not about avoiding failure, it's about what can I do to go on the attack and win? How can I call my shot and say, I'm gonna go hit this big number and promote this corner? I'm not worried about saying I'm trying as hard as I can and still coming up short, because it's impossible to fail when you view everything as a lesson or a learning experience. Trait number three is to only focus on revenue generating inputs. Think about your day to day and how you spend your time. If you are not ruthless with your time and saying no, think about how many people reach out to you with nonsense requests or come up to you and say, hey, let's talk about da da da, that doesn't actually help you reach your quota. We only have so much time in a day. Have you ever looked at a busy executive or someone super successful and said, I just don't know how they find the time to do it. I don't know how they have all this energy. Well, they have the same amount of time in the day as you. So when you see people who especially came from similar circumstances that are achieving disproportionate results, 
The reason they have that and you don't is because your inputs are not matching the desired outputs you want. If you want to consistently crush quota and go to President's Club, that is your output. You need to close a lot of revenue. You need to set a lot of meetings. You need to make a lot of cold calls. What are the inputs you need? Okay, you need to find prospects each and every day. You need to email the prospects. You need to call the prospects. You need to have initial meetings. You need to run demos. You need to do negotiations. You need to do closing. You need to spend time on self-development. Think about those specific inputs that help you achieve your desired outcomes. Write them down right now and then structure your day in a way that focuses directly on those inputs. And one specific action that you can take today is when you first come into the office, checking your email. Your email is a to-do list assigned by everyone else in the world. That is defense. When you show up to the office and you look at your email, even if it's prospects saying, let's set up a meeting, it's still defense because you are reacting to what the world is giving you. When I check my LinkedIn, I have hundreds of messages and it's a, people wanna meet with me, people wanna ask me questions, and it's a distraction because it's not specifically helping me post more videos, do what I'm trying to do goal-wise. It's just a distraction. So stay focused on what are your specific revenue generating activities and the more ruthless with your time you can be, the better. If I'm not working a deal, I'm trying to help someone else. If I'm not helping someone else, I'm prospecting. If I'm not prospecting, I'm focused on self-development. And if it's not one of those four categories, I'm absolutely gonna say no to it. The fourth trait is to know your customer. Sales is buyers, in sellers, you are the seller, you know what you want. Have you thought much about what your buyer wants? The only reason the buyer would purchase your solution as the seller is because they have some problem. They want to get recognized in their job like you do. They wanna not lose their job because they have a family to provide for. They want whatever incentive they have. So how can you talk about how your solution will help them achieve that? If you don't know who your ideal customer profile is, then you have no chance. What I mean by that is what is the specific company profile that you have the most success selling to? I ran a report of the hundreds of deals I've closed and I found out that the specific industry I've had the most success with is professional services. So I took that insight, I looked at my book of business and I started to filter by who are the professional service companies that have the most revenue, the highest employee count or some other compelling interesting event like a law firm versus an accounting firm. Okay, I know law firms, I'm gonna target the law firms. Who within those law firms is my buyer persona? Okay, is it a director of HR, is it a VP of HR, is it a chief human resources officer, is it a manager? Understand specifically who your customer is and what grinds their gears, what keeps them up at night, what prevents them from being successful, what infuriates or frustrates them in their day to day and then put yourself in their shoes and think about what it is that holds them back from what it is they want. And the more you can exploit that, the more you can talk about, hey, as a result of working, partnering with me, I'm gonna help you achieve X, Y, Z, exactly what you want. And it's not always about buying the lowest cost solution. They're willing to pay a premium if you can make their life easier, better, help them be more successful. So think about that dynamic. The only way you as a seller will be able to convince a buyer to buy your solution is by understanding what they need and how you can solve it. And I really encourage you, the next time you get frustrated that, hey, this person won't respond to me, I'm so frustrated with them, it's because you are too dependent on one buyer. Imagine if your town has one grocery store and that grocery store goes out of business. Where are you gonna get your food from? Okay, all of a sudden you're gonna be a literal hunter, not just a figurative hunter like you are in your sales job. If you as a sales rep are too dependent on any one strategy to prospect, too dependent on any one customer to buy, too dependent on any one anything, it will start to make you frustrated, resentful, and a feeling of non-abundance because you need this one person to buy opposed to I have a full pipeline of prospects that I can call upon any time to give me their money. And as you think about being a focused predator, it's about being on the attack and always having a target to be chasing. And if you feel complacency, you will then find yourself in a matter of two to three months in a position of dependence because you will not have put in the necessary levels of input, you will start losing self-belief, and then all of a sudden you'll start feeling failure. So if you enjoyed today's video, I want you to comment the hunter emoji down below. There's a few different emojis that could be, but I wanna see them down in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel now because it really helps, and go subscribe to my second dedicated sales training channel, Modern Sales Right Now. Have a great day, everyone.